Thanks to a certain cinematic universe that we won't name, it seems like every film these days is part of a larger narrative thread or is connected to another movie in some other way. Sequels, prequels, reboots, spin-offs, team-ups, all of these tropes and more are trotted out on the reg by studios in an attempt to create hype around a property and get some of that sweet, sweet franchise money. Sometimes though, links between films can be a little more subtle. I'm Cy for WhatCulture.com and these are 10 movies you didn't know were connected. Number 10. Tangled and Frozen there's a whole big theory out there about how all the different Disney and Pixar films intertwine with one another, but if we began to pull at that thread then the entire video would fall apart. Instead, let's focus on two majorly successful princess movies for The House of Mouse, 2010's Tangled and 2013's Frozen. Based on the stories of Rapunzel and the Snow Queen respectively, Tangled and Frozen both gave the world iconic characters, stories and songs and are among some of the most beloved Disney movies from the 21st century. At the beginning of Frozen, Princess Anna excitedly wanders through the streets of Arendelle as her subjects gather for the coronation of her sister as queen. If you look closely, you can see that among the well-wishers and tourists are none other than Rapunzel and Flynn Rider from Tangled. Rider's face is obscured, but Rapunzel's is there for all to see. She even has the brunette hair from the end of Tangled. Whether you think this is a part of the interweaving web of Disney and Pixar movies or not, it's still a nice little easter egg. Number 9. Spider-Man 2 and The Punisher before he became the gruff and sexy slab of meat that is John Bernthal, the Punisher was portrayed on the big screen by Thomas Jane in a self-titled 2004 film. Guess which other popular Marvel character got a film release that same year? If you said Blade, then technically you're correct, but the answer we were looking for was Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire's second outing as Peter Parker pitted him against a rampaging Doctor Octopus, as well as advancing his relationship with Mary Jane Watson. The film's emotional climax sees MJ running through New York City after abandoning her own wedding, deciding she wants to be with Peter regardless of the dangers it might bring. As the runaway bride tears through a busy park, she runs past a man dressed all in black who turns to watch her. Though it's never expressly said, it's believed this is meant to be the Punisher. They even got Jane's stunt double for the role. It's a very minor cameo, but one that's actually quite important in the grand scheme of superhero cinema. The Marvel Cinematic Universe built itself on the idea of characters from one movie turning up in another, and as it turns out, the pre-MCU Spider-Man films were doing that years ahead of their time. Number 8. Captain America the First Avenger and Raiders of the Lost Ark this is more of an implied connection than a straight up link, but we still think it's pretty interesting. In the first Captain America film, high ranking Nazi Johann Schmidt is working to harness the power of the Tesseract for world domination. It's assumed that Schmidt is doing this for the benefit of the Third Reich, but it turns out he has his own ideas. Schmidt wants the power for his own organization, Hydra, and actually derides Hitler for his own foolish pursuits. In one line, he says that the Fuhrer is too busy digging for trinkets in the desert, which opens up a very interesting theory. The plot of the first Indiana Jones movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark, centers around a group of Nazi officials searching the Egyptian deserts for the Ark of the Covenant. Could this be the trinket that Schmidt was referring to? The likelihood is the Red Skull was referring to the Nazis' real-world obsession with discovering historical artifacts, but it is fun to imagine for a moment a world where Captain America and Indiana Jones exist within the same universe. Although that being said, if that's the case, where was Indy when Thanos attacked? He could have whipped the Infinity Gauntlet right out of his hands and saved everyone a whole mess of trouble. Number 7. Spy Kids and Machete In 2001, Spy Kids, the titular pint-sized private eyes, are in need of some help after their parents are kidnapped by the villainous kids TV host, Vegan Floop. In their hour of need, they turn to their uncle, Isidore, who is better known by his nickname of Machete. Nine years after Spy Kids, actor Danny Trejo would reprise this role and star in his own movie, which was also called Machete. Only instead of a children's entertainer, this time he was dealing with drug cartels and corrupt police chiefs. That escalated quickly. Machete is an old-fashioned B-movie style bloody action affair with all the over-the-top fights and viscera you could possibly ask for. Trejo does a great job as the gruff hard as nails killer and brings some serious depth to a role you wouldn't believe originated in a kids movie. Perhaps this connection shouldn't come as too much of a surprise, after all both are directed by the same man, Robert Rodriguez. However, anybody who grew up watching the cuddly, ultra-safe Spy Kids will be in for one hell of a shock if they ever decide to give any of that machete lark a go. 
Number six, Ghostbusters and Caddyshack. Whilst Ghostbusters and Casper apparently exist in the same universe, that's a pretty direct reference from one film to the other. Ergo, this entry plums for something a bit more subtle. So subtle, in fact, that it didn't even make it into the final cut of the movie. In a deleted scene from the 1984 comedy Great, Rick Moranis' character Lewis Tully is being chased through Central Park by a ghostly hound. He runs past two hobos, one of which has a particularly familiar voice. Fans of the 1980 film Caddyshack will instantly recognise the dulcet tones of Carl Spackler, the unhinged groundskeeper from the movie. He's portrayed by Bill Murray, who of course is also very famously in Ghostbusters. The connections don't stop there either. Caddyshack was directed by the late Harold Ramis, who portrays Murray's colleague Egon Spengler in the film as well. The scene was cut from the film because quite simply Ghostbusters is not a sketch comedy piece and it confused audiences to see Bill Murray play the lead and also just this random hobo. Still, both films are hilarious and beloved in equal measure and a better known connection between the two would have only heightened fans' enjoyment for them both. Number 5, Die Hard 2 and Commando. There's a long-standing rumour in Hollywood that the script for a sequel to the 1985 film Commando ended up becoming the basis for the first Die Hard, which came out three years later. This theory has been debunked numerous times, including by Die Hard and Commando scriptwriter Stephen E. Souza. However, this doesn't mean there aren't other connections between the two famous action franchises. In the sequel to Die Hard, John McClane is once again having an awful Christmas as he finds himself facing off against a group of terrorists who have taken over an airport. In the middle of the action is General Ramon Esperanza, a disgraced military leader who used government money to invest in the drugs trade. Esperanza is from a fictional country called Valverde, the same country that Arnold Schwarzenegger's character is almost sent to in Commando. Not only that, but De Souza also believes that, although it was never expressly said, Valverde is where the action takes place in Predator. Basically, if you need to set your movie in a place where people won't be bothered by loud gunfire and or alien monsters, then Valverde is your number one destination. Number 4. Alien and Serenity Serenity was released in 2005 and serves as the sequel slash conclusion to the short-lived but beloved sci-fi TV show Firefly. Written and directed by Firefly head honcho Joss Whedon, Serenity takes the characters of the original series and puts them in a new feature-length adventure to give them the send-off they deserve. The film was very well received by critics, but did you know that it exists in the same realm as another much lauded science fiction film? At the beginning of the movie, Captain Malcolm Reynolds is seen firing up a weapon. On that screen for the weapon, clear for all to see, is the logo for the Weyland Utani Corporation. It's a huge corporate company responsible for conducting research on xenomorphs in the hope of using them to generate weapons. The corporation is a huge part of the alien universe and Whedon's nod to them in Serenity is a fantastically subtle hint at one of the biggest and best sci-fi franchises of all time. Number 3. The Rules of Attraction and American Psycho Both the 2000 Gorefest, American Psycho and 2002 black comedy The Rules of Attraction are based on books by the author Brett Easton Ellis. Sexy serial killer Patrick Bateman, played by Christian Bale, is the main character and star attraction of American Psycho. Bale's brilliantly detached performance as the grisly murder launched his movie career and it's had a long-lasting effect on pop culture. As for the protagonist of The Rules of Attraction, while well, he might be a little jealous about his brother hogging all the glory. James Van Der Beek's character in The Rules of Attraction is indeed called Sean Bateman and he is canonically the younger brother of American Psycho's titular Psycho. Patrick was even set to make an appearance in The Rules of Attraction Action, this time played by Casper Van Dien, but those scenes were ultimately cut. Fans of Elis should not be surprised by this revelation as Patrick Bateman crops up in many of his works. However, knowing that one of the most recognisable and captivating murderers in all of cinema could have appeared in a different movie altogether is a pretty big deal. Number 2. Star Wars and E.T. the Extraterrestrial the similarities between George Lucas's first Star Wars movie and Steven Spielberg's cherished classic don't stop at they both got aliens in them. If you want to get technical about it, the aliens from one film are in the other, and vice versa. In a scene from E.T., the lovable little space creature is taken out for Halloween, hidden under a white bedsheet. The audience experiences his discoveries firsthand, taking in the wonderment he feels seeing everyone dressed up. But he takes a particular liking to one costume. E.T. sees a child dressed up as Yoda and is immediately drawn to them. He tries to follow them, saying home, home, as he does so. Is this a clue that E.T. knows Yoda? Is E.T. a Jedi Master? 
If that wasn't proof enough, let's examine a scene from The Phantom Menace. During a session of the Galactic Senate, a group of aliens who look exactly like E.T. are seen waving their arms around when Queen Amidala calls for a vote of no confidence in the Chancellor. There you have it, conclusive proof that E.T. and his species are in fact part of the same universe as Star Wars. Or maybe it's just two good director friends putting nods to each other's work in their films, but that's a lot less fun for us fans. Number 1. Lost in Translation and Her these two films aren't connected by a character or a universe, but by a real-life experience. Sofia Coppola and Spike Jones, the directors of Lost in Translation and Her respectively, used to be married. They divorced in 2003 and would both go on to explore their failed relationship in these two movies. Lost in Translation came out the year of the divorce and drew on Coppola's own experiences of feeling lost in a relationship whilst in her 20s. The director manifests herself as Charlotte, as played by Scarlett Johansson, a young woman who struggles with feeling isolated because of her marriage. Solitude is also present in Her, which follows Theodore Twombly, as portrayed by Joaquin Phoenix, and his relationship with a sentient AI, also played by Scarlett Johansson. Both movies are about unusual relationships, Charlotte's with an older man and Theodore's with his AI, and how they offer joy against the bleak backdrop of so-called normality. Both are absolutely fantastic films and complement each other beautifully. They offer an interesting perspective into the mental states of two different parties during a failing marriage and send a stark warning that love on its own might not be enough to make a person feel whole. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below. Were you aware of any of these connections? And of course, let us know the ones that we missed. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I've been Cypher Watt Culture and have a good week.